The Smurf attack is an old mechanism. Actually, it dates back to early uh, 1998. And it's a mechanism for carrying out denial of service attacks on a target system. And the security vulnerability that was exploited in the Smurf attack has actually, quite fortunately, been fixed. Uh, but having said that, I think it would still be useful, nonetheless, uh, to look at Smurf because it may be of historical interest. And uh, it may be, you could think of it as an early example of mounting a denial of service attack. And it specifically uses this idea of amplification uh, to mount such denial of service attacks. Now, the way that, that uh, Smurf works is it takes advantage of a particular protocol known as the Internet or the Internet Control Messaging Protocol or ICMP. Okay, and ICMP basically is a protocol for uh, being able to determine the status of a given machine. So, for example, one can initiate the ICMP protocol via a command that's, that's actually known as ping, and a lot of modern operating systems allow for this command called ping. Uh, and so, for example, let's say you typed in ping. Uh, www.example.com, uh, example uh, what would then happen is your system would send a message via the ICMP protocol, um, specifically would send what's known as an ICMP echo request message. So it would send this uh, ICMP message, this ping message, uh, to a particular server, okay? And this would be the server that was located at... Uh, the domain uh, of example.com would be the web server located at example.com. Okay, and then this web server would in turn um, send back a response. And, and this response is known as uh, an ICMP echo, echo response. So uh, also sometimes called an acknowledgement. And so you have the, the initial person sending uh, an, echo, an echo request and then receiving back an echo response, okay? And the response is, is an acknowledgement. It basically lets the requester know that everything is running fine. Uh, and the ping request basically is a good way to ascertain if a particular server is up and running effectively, okay? Now imagine that an attacker somehow decided to send a large stream of such ping requests uh, from multiple systems uh, and he flooded a given target system uh, with these ping requests, well, in that case, um, what would start to happen is that the attacker can potentially start to saturate the server's resources. In other words, the server will be so busy handling requests from the attacker that it won't be able to handle responses from legitimate traffic. And this particular idea of, of flooding somebody with a bunch of ping requests, this is actually known as a, a ping flood. Okay, it's a very primitive form of denial of service attack, and I say primitive because the attacker needs a lot of horsepower, a lot of systems to be able to target this one system, okay, this one target, okay? Now, it turns out that there is a more clever way to mount uh, an attack using ping, and the idea is to leverage the fact that some servers on the internet have what's known uh, as an IP broadcast address. Uh, this is actually, this is not so common anymore, but there was a time when a lot of servers on the internet uh, had an IP address that was used uh, for broadcast. Okay, so it's an IP broadcast address. Okay, and with this IP broadcast address, what would happen is basically any ICMP request or ping request sent to that broadcast address actually would get forwarded. So if you do a ping uh, to a broadcast address, what's gonna happen is that initial server to which you've made the, the request will actually forward the request down to any other hosts that are on the same network. So for example, let's say there are a whole bunch of other hosts uh, on the network, and they're all gonna receive a copy of this one particular uh, request that was actually sent to the, the broadcast address, okay? And what these guys in turn will do is, it's a ping request, and they're gonna go ahead and respond to that ping request, okay? So they're gonna send back an acknowledgement, an ICMP echo response in response to the ICMP echo request. Hopefully that makes some sense. Now this is just an initial observation. To be able to take this observation and translate it into an actual denial of a service attack, what the attacker is going to do is he's going to forge or spoof, okay? He's gonna forge or spoof his IP address. Okay, instead of putting 
let's say he's located at the IP address uh, 1.3.5.7, okay? If he wants to target a particular system, let's say that system is located at the address uh, 2.4.6.8, he is going to, in his ICMP echo request packet, in the ICMP echo request packet, he's going to put in this fake IP address of 2.4.6.8 uh, instead of putting in this legitimate uh, request of 1.3.5.7. And that should, that should be maybe a bit more careful. The actual forgery is not going to happen inside of the ICMP packet, but inside of a, of a broader, let's say, IP packet uh, over which this ICMP request is being transmitted. Okay, And this actually works because it turns out that ICMP the protocol itself never checks for the authenticity of the source address. It assumes the source address was put in authentically. And that will be the case most of the time if you have a legitimate party making that request. But if it's a malicious party, they may be able to forge and put in a different address into that packet. Okay. So now what's going to happen is when the ICMP echo request or the ping request is sent to this one particular server, Okay, because the server has a broadcast, it's going to now broadcast that request to all the hosts of the network. And these hosts of the network, from their purview, from their vantage point, it looks like the request is actually coming from uh, the address that was placed by the by the attacker, 2.4.6.8. Okay? And what they're actually going to do is now all of these different systems are now going to acknowledge this request, but they're going to acknowledge it thinking it's going coming from 2.4.6.8. So they're going to send back an ICMP echo response to the target server. Okay, And so that's a lot of responses that are being sent concurrently to the target server. And you can literally actually have in a single network, you may have hundreds of systems that are associated with a particular, uh, with a particular network. And you may be able to access those systems with a single uh, ping request sent to the, the broadcast IP address on one of those systems. That ping request will be forwarded to all the systems inside that network. And those systems in turn will then respond to that request by issuing an echo response. But they're going to actually end up responding back to the wrong party. They're going to respond back to 2.4.6.8. Okay. So basically what the attacker did is he made, is he really took a very simple strategy. He made a minimal amount of work and he made a single ping request and basically translated into potentially hundreds of acknowledgments, hundreds of echo responses, okay? All of which essentially just pummeled a single target system with traffic, okay? And by repeating this procedure, the target system will basically be taken offline. Okay, it's going to be saturated. It won't be able to actually respond to legitimate requests. And this attack principle, which uses the concept of an ICMP broadcast, as I mentioned, is known as a Smurf attack. And it's actually called the Smurf attack because that name actually comes from the name of the original piece of exploit code that was used to take advantage of this vulnerability. And I believe that that code is actually just was named a Smurf.c. Okay. Now, I want to mention very briefly, there is also another attack uh, that's known as Fraggle. Okay, and Fraggle basically operates almost identically to the way that the Smurf attack operates. It's, it's analogous to Smurf, except that it takes advantage of a similar issue, not in ICMP packets, but in uh, packets associated with the User Datagram Protocol, or UDP. Okay, but it basically it does, essentially uses the broadcast address together with UDP packets to basically create a type of amplification and thereby mount a much more pronounced attack. Uh, fortunately for us, it, most systems on the internet today are no longer susceptible to either uh, Fraggle or to Smurf for that matter. But I thought these particular attacks would be of historical interest and they may be useful for being able to learn lessons about how to architect secure systems down the line.